Hello there. Welcome back everybody. This is Rajesh here again with another session about uh, Marketo and uh, uh, tips and uh, tricks in Marketo. Uh, we, are, uh, we are going to continue looking into Marketo triggers uh, to build a foundation in Marketo. And uh, so we'll be talking about triggers which are frequently used in Marketo and also giving practical real life examples of each of them. Uh, the hope is that it, uh, it will help uh, new Marketo users to get up to speed and uh, also uh, sometimes uh, learning via video can be very very useful uh, and that's my genuine hope uh, to achieve with this um, and yeah so let's get at it uh, so today we're gonna check uh, about another very very uh, regularly used trigger uh, called data value changes uh, and right here where was it okay data value changes uh, now what is this Let's talk about what it is uh, search. Now, as you see in Marketo, Marketo have multiple uh, areas of Marketo. Some of them are along with the assets like landing pages and emails and all that. Some of them are with the actual programming. We are in the marketing activities and others is uh, called lead database. So what is a lead database? Lead database is nothing but a, a database whereby you hold all your people like, you know, information about people, first name, for any given lead in your market or database, you might have first name, last name, email, company name, and several other fields, uh, things like that, right? You can add and create new fields to it as you wish and as your business case uh, or business needs. Um, and that's that's basically those. So they are called fields. Email address is a field. Uh, company name is a field. Uh, date of birth might be a field if you need that one. And things like that. Favorite color is a field right if you have one so things like that now sometimes we want to do things and trigger some things and take certain actions when a particular field changes its value from something to something else um, and so for example uh, and let's let's look at it but let's say for example uh, one of the frequent things you will do when you set up a, a, a pro set up smart campaigns to make sure your email deliverability is good is to set up uh, values which are um, to maintain your emails or the leads only maintain good people or uh, good deliverable email addresses and not to uh, keep on sending emails to the uh, to the email addresses which are not valid and thing like that now <coughs> <coughs> so to do that you <clears throat> you can use something like data value changes now uh, so for example so you will do let's say you have a flow which uh, when some uh, uh, email bounces you mark those email addresses as invalid or you know hard bounce or whatnot right so that way you take them out uh, but let's say your salesperson comes in or that person who uh, who's record and and they said oh this person actually moved on or their company domain changes so no wonder that email addresses are bouncing so is the new email address. So find this person and change their email address to, um, you know, this new value and it will start working. So it's not that the person, it doesn't exist anymore or whatnot. It's just that the company's domain name changed, right? A thing like that. So in that case, if somebody manually goes into market or fills a form and changes that person's email address from the older value, which doesn't work anymore to a newer value, we want to, uh, mark that person as a valid email address again, right? So that's kind of the list of the functionalities. So what you do is that even the end, what we do is that uh, data value changes. If you want to know, we want to know when the email address changes, data value changes, we want to do something uh, is we basically want to do change data value again. And we this time we want to say, um, let's say, email invalid is equal to false uh, because it was true let's say this person had an email address which was bouncing so we had it as a true now we want to set it as email invalid is false um, so why because we changed that email address um, because somebody manually entered it or whatnot or we corrected now let's give that new email address a chance to actually get delivered and if it doesn't it will the other programs will kick in and mark that email address invalid again but at least this is a good chance by which 
newly fixed email addresses get a chance to be corrected. Otherwise, you just fix the email address, but the email invalid is still false. Emails won't go out, uh, still true. Emails won't go out to that person. So that's why why you're doing it. Um, yes, sir. So, um, so that's hopefully that makes sense. But you said, hmm, you know what? But what if the email address I added, new added, I want to make sure that that email address was changed to a value which is actually it looks valid, right? So how do I do that? So there are multiple ways, but one of the ways which this trigger allows is new value. You want to say something like this, new value contains at, right? Because if the new value needs to be a valid email address, it better contain at. If it the new value address of the email address is not containing at, that means clearly it's invalid. So I do, you don't even want to trigger it, this flow, because you don't want to give a chance to an email address which doesn't even have at in it because it's clearly it's gonna bounce, right? Thing like that. Uh, but what if you wanted to also check the previous value for something uh, for whatever reason? So you can also do that. You can also have multiple constraints um, as such. Um, uh, and uh, if you see here is uh, contains, yeah. So you can have multiple constraints like that. Um, but you can check the or new value which it became, or you can change the previous value it changed from or and, and take actions. So those are the two constraints with that. Um, then you can have a reason why the email address was changed. Was it because of the manual entry or a web form fill out or thing like that. So that that you can also set up. And again, this is a sandbox which is very little data. Uh, that's why it's not populating, but it will give you options, different reasons by which uh, this data will you change so far. And you can pick uh, from there. Um, so that's the reason you can have a different reason for uh, the data value changed. Source, now again similar, but you can have multiple sources again from a form fill out, whether it was a form fill out which fixed it, whether it was a manual entry, whether it came from Salesforce, maybe Salesperson changed it in Salesforce, and, and it came up here, or was it API or whatnot. So you can do based on that, you can selectively do, okay, if the Salesperson changes in Salesforce, I want to do something, uh, maybe you may want to do uh, like email uh, invalid cause or something you want to null it out or, or thing like that. You can have additional comment or something you can do. So things like that you can do. And uh, that's, and uh, so you, as you see, there are a lot of options, a lot of power you can build uh, into Marketo Smart Campaigns uh, using the data value changes. This is one of the very frequent uh, smart campaign uh, triggers which uh, I've seen used in Marketo cases. In fact, pretty much it, I would say each and every Marketo instance, they will be uh, triggers like this if they are using Marketo to its, uh, at least to, to its half of its power as said. So we need to have something like this for sure. And and more of the use of this uh, data value changes trigger as said. And, and in addition to all the other constraints, there are common instances like date of activity. When did that data of activity change? Did it change in last past one year or something? You might want to change, um, you know, thing like that. Again, this is a trigger, but um, it's there. It's because these two are kind of generic number of times. Also, you can do, but again, this being a trigger, not so much. It will be triggered every time, but it's still there. Main, main, main thing is that the new value and previous value, those are mostly used in the source. Those three uh, combinations of those get used mostly to isolate the business cases we frequently need in market or for making sure you maintain your database um, pretty clear and uh, squeaky clean uh, based on as the data value changes and sometimes you will not let some values change and all that um, thing like that. So for example, if we have a lead status you don't want to change it behind or something so you might want to you will enforce some of the things if the previous value uh, is uh, like you know it going the lead is going back in the progression status you don't want to allow that and you can kind of check that one there are several use cases of that uh, but i think that's pretty much it that's you know it's a pretty straightforward but very powerful and very very useful flow builder in market home the trigger uh, data value changes is very useful and I think that's pretty much it. If you have any comments, questions, let me know in the comments. Um, and please subscribe to this channel because I'm adding such a, um, 
Marketo uh, primers uh, related videos uh, on the pretty much on the weekly basis, maybe even a daily basis if I get a chance. Uh, but pretty soon it will be there. And please subscribe because either you want to get your videos when I add, uh, as I go ahead. And if you have any questions or if you want me to talk about something else, let me know. And I would love to uh, see if I can add any value to that or I can um, provide any inputs on that. Um, again, um, nice to talk to you guys and hoping to meet you soon in one of the Marketer Summits.